Capnography is a non-invasive, continuous measurement of the concentration of exhaled carbon dioxide, CO2, during respiration. When the CO2 concentration data is displayed as a graphic waveform, it is called a capnogram. There are two main types of capnograms, time and volume. Time capnograms display changes in CO2 during inspiratory and expiratory phases of respiration versus time, as shown here. An ET CO2 reading represents only one data point on the CO2 waveform, which is the peak CO2 at the end of expiration. Volume capnograms, like the one shown here, display only expiration. Volumetric capnography is used to evaluate the efficiency of lung ventilation by calculating dead space. This is typically used on patients receiving mechanical ventilation. Historically, capnography has been used primarily by anesthesiologists to identify ventilation situations that could lead to hypoxia if uncorrected. However, its use has been extended outside the operating room to emergency rooms, endoscopic suites, x-ray rooms, on-site emergency, and trauma fields. In fact, the American Heart Association has recognized capnography's utility in judging the effectiveness of chest compression during CPR. Capnography monitoring of CO2 systems can provide an early indication of subtle pathological disturbances in metabolism, perfusion, and respiratory CO2 gas exchange in ventilation. Because ETCO2 is dependent on the production of CO2 from the tissues as a byproduct of metabolism, the perfusion of CO2-rich blood back to the lungs and diffusion of CO2 into the alveolus, and the active exhaling of CO2 through ventilation, alterations of any of these functions will be reflected in the CO2. For example, under normal conditions, even when a patient's ventilation and perfusion remain constant, the level of end tidal CO2, as measured by capnography, would increase or decrease in proportion to the body's temperature. The cells of the body use oxygen to metabolize carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids to produce energy. This is known as the Krebs cycle. A waste byproduct of that process is carbon dioxide, CO2. The CO2 is transported from the cellular level to the lungs via the vascular system. CO2 is removed from the lungs during the exhalation part of the breathing cycle. If oxygen is not available, a process called anaerobic glycolysis occurs. This type of anaerobic metabolism results in the production of lactate, which can cause acidic conditions in the blood. The medulla oblongata is a portion of the hindbrain that controls automatic functions such as breathing, digestion, and heart rate. This portion of the brain controls both the rate and depth of breathing to regulate CO2 levels. If carbon dioxide concentration is not regulated, a toxic accumulation in the blood can occur, resulting in respiratory failure. Although the medulla oblongata is the primary regulator of breathing, a secondary mechanism regulates breathing in response to hypoxemia. This mechanism stimulates peripheral chemoreceptors located in the vascular system of the aortic and carotid bodies. Cellular waste in the form of CO2 is transported out of the cell and into the bloodstream, where it combines with water to form carbonic acid in the blood. Simply put, the higher the concentration of CO2 in the blood, the more acidic the blood will be. The lower the concentration of CO2 in the blood, the more alkaline the blood will be. Approximately 75% of carbon dioxide is transported in the red blood cells, and 25% is transported in the plasma as carbonic acid. The Bohr effect describes the relationship between blood pH and hemoglobin's affinity toward oxygen. When blood pH is low, more acidic, hemoglobin has a lower affinity than normal for oxygen. Therefore, oxygen unbinds more readily at the tissue. When pH is higher, more alkaline, hemoglobin has a greater affinity than normal for oxygen, making the oxygen available to tissue less than normal. For example, Hyperventilation causes an increase in alveolar ventilation and decreases in CO2, leading to a left shift of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. This causes an increased affinity for oxygen on the hemoglobin molecule. Although one might think hyperventilation promotes better O2 uptake, it actually reduces O2 release to the tissues. CO2 is indirectly related to the pH of the blood, so when CO2 rises, the pH falls, becoming more acidic. 
In healthy individuals, the body continuously maintains pH in a normal range of 7.35 to 7.45, which is slightly alkaline as compared to water. A blood pH drop below 7 can lead to a coma or even death due to severe acidosis. Blood pH above 7.45 is called alkalosis, and a level above 8 can also lead to death. Capnography monitors CO2 removal during breathing and provides a breath-by-breath -breath assessment of the patient's ventilatory status. N-tidal carbon dioxide, or ETCO2, represents the measurement of the concentration of CO2 expressed as partial pressure in the mixed gas expired at the end of a normal breath. The normal range for ETCO2 is between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury. In addition to the numeric ETCO2 value, the waveform display shows a graphic representation of the inhaled and exhaled partial pressure of CO2 in each respiratory cycle plotted against time. The CO2 waveform changes immediately when there is a change in breathing. That is your first indication of a possible respiratory problem and it can potentially enable you to make a timely intervention. N-tidal CO2 and respiration rate have an inverse relationship. In normal healthy lungs, as the respiration rate and depth increase, more carbon dioxide is removed. This leads to a lower N-tidal CO2 value. As the respiration rate and depth decrease, less carbon dioxide is removed, resulting in a higher ETCO2 value. There are two types of sensors that capnography uses to measure ETCO2, mainstream and sidestream. Both sensor types utilize infrared technology to measure CO2 at the airway site. The mainstream sensor is interposed between the tracheal tube and the breathing circuit. The mainstream measurement of CO2 is taken across the airway. In sidestream sensor technology, the respiratory gases are diverted via an adapter and a sampling line to the monitor housing the infrared sensor. Traditional CO2 sensors and sampling lines, both mainstream and sidestream, have certain limitations that can contribute to inaccurate readings and cause their use to be restricted within certain patient populations. Microstream CO2 sidestream sensors and breath sampling lines address some of the limitations of conventional systems. Microstream technology features a focused CO2-specific infrared light beam, a low flow sample rate of 50 milliliters per minute, a miniature 15 microliter sample cell sensor, and inline fluid handling. Non-invasive measurement of ETCO2 can be achieved while oxygen is being delivered without diluting the sample. The microstream system can be used with a wide range of patient populations, including intubated and non-intubated patients, along with all patient ages from neonatals to adults. Supplemental oxygen can be given with filter lines up to 5 liters per minute.